do we? <clears throat> so let's have a look at this. Let me just turn on the music a bit more. Yeah, <clears throat> I think that should do it. So I am preparing, as um, you may have been, f if you were following my channel for a bit, <clears throat> as you might know, to run Rime of the Frest Maiden, but I want to run it actually on uh, Dragonbane, because <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of D&D, to be honest. So, um, and I have this, this campaign book sitting here for a while, and I thought, actually, with Dragonbane, maybe I finally hit the sweet spot where this system, um, this setting together should be some good fun for me. So... I've been sitting about now, we had uh, session zero recently, and I've been setting up for a fair few hours my, my foundry system. So let's have a look at this. Now this is the Dragonbane foundry system, as you can probably tell. Um, but I started by loading in some maps, and yeah, so this is the official map that comes with it. And actually, uh, I've been hoarding, I have to say, over the years since I bought the book, I've been hoarding some stuff, some resources for this. So actually, what I'm using here, sorry, I'm the wrong one, is one from my Michael's, Michael's Maps Fan Art, yeah, Forgotten Realms, his 10 tons map I'm using as a backdrop here. Let me just fold this in, we don't need this yet. Um, yeah, and I think this is actually a really pretty map. So I've got the, the typical snow effect here from FX Master, I think it's called. Uh, and then basically I created these little um, pins here with information for the players. So this is the player information from the book um, and from D&D Beyond, actually. I got, I have to admit, I spent a little bit of money on it, even though I had the book already, just to get all the, the resources um, on here. You may have seen it before, I don't know. Do you know D&D Beyond, guys? Yeah, because you've got some... Oh, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Because you have some nice uh, presentation here, and it actually really helps to to get all these maps and so on in beautiful format, rather than trying to get them from a book that is not even available on PDF. Um, so this is, yeah, definitely useful. And I, I use the D&D Beyond importer to actually get a lot of the resources from the ND Beyond into my foundry, um, which definitely helps, definitely made it faster. So we will start up here in Lonelywood. And um, I'm starting with something from Eventier, again, something that I, I pilfered ages ago, um, with, an, uh, with a little adventure called um, Song of the Mountain. That's what we're going to do. I haven't seen any any actual play of that on, on the internet, so that, that will be our tryout. We have had our session zero with the character generation. And the characters are basically set up. Where did I put them? I put them on the canyon scene. There it is. Have you seen? So this is our hardy party, yeah? Um, we have... A roguish duck. We have a halfling knight. You can see that the, the group are pushing the boundaries a bit. We have um, a... <laughs> it's called Douglas. No, it's not called Douglas. I need to change that name. Um, Imelda, who's a, a ice elf, tundra elf, a, a mentalist. We have our Goldie, our, our trader here, our merchant human. And we've got a dwarf artisan called Vogon. And he doesn't have a name. Why well, doesn't he have a name? Twinkle. Yeah, just covered over. Twinkle. So this is our party. And yeah, we had some, some great fun. It took us about two hours, actually. Maybe even slightly longer to, to get the party together and get the setting together. Um, yeah, what else have we got? I, I, you, then Lonelywood is going to be our, our first setting. So I've used some of James' uh, RPG art backdrop pictures, which are really, really gorgeous, for the backdrop. So he's got one for each of the 10 towns and a few other sites. Um, he's got an animated and a still version. I basically am just using the still version to keep the performance up. And then this is just a tile I put over the top here of the map. Um, and I've done that basically for quite a few of them. Now, the next bit I'm going to show has got something to do with the adventure. Um, so if you're one of my players, you may want to wait until two weeks or so from now after we've played this. So the next bit basically... This is the adventure. Um, where we're going to go from Lonelywood, so the spelling mistake. I might actually have to have a look whether that was fixed in one of the later versions. 
Um, definitely an E missing there. Um, and then they have to go through a little bit of a wilderness thing. It's supposed to take two, two, two and a half days. Um, so we'll have a little bit of wilderness travel in it. And I'm using some of the Bitter Reach stuff from Forbidden Lands um, to enrich that a little bit. I made some tables, some um, nice little roll tables here. Um, I spent day or travel. Yeah, so I've got the mishaps from there, travel with mishaps, and I also have my my weather um, for that. I might actually just show you the chat bar. So it's a nested table I've made here, which will roll wind, snow, and cold. And when I do so, you then get one of those summary things. There's a storm and heavy snowfall, and it's cold. Oh, that's not going to be a good travel day, is it? Um, but yeah, let's see how much we use of that. I'm not quite sure yet. Um, they'll have to basically go through the um, wilderness, a couple of encounters there, and then they get to this final encounter here. It's all very, very um, lyrical almost. It's all about heroes who died and so on. Their song is still echoing from the mountain. And um, it came with a dungeon map. Looks like this. But I spent a little bit of time of actually recreating this dungeon map in Dungeon Alchemist. So for me, it's going to look like this now. Yeah. Um, I think it's pretty cool, personally. But then I would say that because I made it. Um, so if you compare that, for example, the final battle room here to that, you can see I tried to basically, I used the um, floor plan function within Dungeon Alchemist, basically just copied this floor plan in, and then I basically built over the top of it. Quite useful, the sort of blueprint version of it. Um, created the, the next city here, Tamerlane, as well. And with Tamerlane, there's um, an adventure that comes with it called A Beautiful Mine, which I also prepared today. Um, yeah, I wanted to show you briefly how you can actually use... Uh, if you don't want to use the full D&D Beyond import, I wanted to show you a little trick I found very useful. So, for example, if I have here a... Um, beginning, let's use one of the beginning things, forming mugs, which is a quest. Yeah, if you see this and you say, ah, oh, I want to get this all into Foundry, you might, some people do. Yeah, and you can see it's actually a lot more than just, it's a whole bridge and a chapter. So you go to control U, certainly on my keyboard, see the source of it, um, scroll down until you find a tag called content. You can also, of course, use the find on page function for this. Basically, it starts when all the text starts happening. Here, content. Zoom a bit. So, inside caption. Oh, I'm already past it. What's happening? That's happening. So, outside caption, inside caption, navigation, branch, and uh, content. You take all this. If you want to, let's just take it all until it says footer. So footer we don't need anymore. So where's my footer gone? Here, up to here. Control C. You hover across to um, your journal. You make a new journal. Just got a test. You make a page called Brinchander. Go to this little here, HTML entry, source code, paste that in, save it, and look at that. Ta-da! Not bad, is it? Not bad. And the pictures um, are actually HTML linked, um, so they're not actually on my local Forge install here. There are a couple of things I don't like, like box text don't come out and things, because of the HTML features they're using, but it's pretty fast if I can consider how much time otherwise I would have had to invest in this um, I wouldn't have done it basically but I'm quite happy with this this version of this and I can still for instance click on here it will open HTML but if I close this down again it's another foundry pop-up and I should be able to show players from here so how long did that take not long ago at all so let me just get rid of my test thing um, I also found that, I think it was yesterday, the, or today, this morning maybe, the last um, module that I couldn't 
um, get on version 12 came live. So I'm now on version 12. And the last one that I really wanted was um, Pincushion, because that's what I use for this for this map here. Yeah, these these pins and the layout, um, the, the flyouts and so on. That's all Pincushion. That's what I'm using here. Also wanted to show you briefly, and again, spoiler, spoiler, spoilers, spoilers, um, the first uh, dungeon that I've done, Tourmaline, Gem Mine. Ah, I hate this. Still want to left click to go to the scene, but it doesn't work that way. So activate. So this is the map um, from d, d Beyond. I worked a little bit on it, but actually the, the walls actually came with it already through the Adventure Muncher from Mr. Primate. Um, with a few things like they're, they're sometimes too closely cut, so you can't actually see the wall, but um, that can be a bit of a yeah, drawback, let's put it that way. But one of the things I wanted to show you is now in, in version 12, you've got the zones, or regions, I think they call them. So my little character here, Twinkle or Halfling, can run all the way across the dungeon if it doesn't get snagged on the corner. And when there is somewhere where he can actually go downstairs. No, not to the Underdark. But here I created a zone. And if I step up now, look at that. Doof. Ha! Without having to do the teleporters and active tiles and stuff that I previously had done. And he can go back. So, that works quite nicely, doesn't it? Then he can jump down to the Underdark if he wants to, but then we would need new characters. Hint, hint. Bum, ba, dum. Where's the other one? So, there. And he's now on the next level. I think it's pretty nifty. Anyway, so, um, that's the sort of thing I've been spending most of my Sunday on today. Um, I have basically on my... Let me expand this now, extend this. On my notes... I have pretty much the, the standard stuff. Oh, yeah, something else you have to do, of course, is NPCs. So, not all of the, the beasties you get um, are necessarily in uh, available in Dragonbane. So I had to make up a few. So, for example, I had a ben Bandit Chief. <coughs> that wasn't so difficult. Now, he's a quite powerful berserker, so might be too powerful, we'll see. He's got multi-attack and things like this. Um, but I set him up like this. He doesn't have ferocity, so he's not actually a monster. But if I go for some monsters they might be encountering, I basically try to guess at some stats, and I created a um, attack table for them, thinking up of thinking up some attacks like this one here. Tentacle strike, razor sharp bite, tentacle grab, and sweeping attack for attacks. And you can roll or you can pick. Yeah, so that's going to be a bit different to D and D. Um, but basically, yeah, I've been trying to um, morph the characters, giving it the skills that I need, the weapons that I need. I don't actually need the weapons here. Um, and I also had to make some kobolds. Um, that's not what I wanted to do. And of course, I used Midjourney and so on for character artwork. God, no, it's not that easy, actually, to get a kobold running on, on Midjourney, but eventually I got there. Only that this guy only seems to have one big ear. <laughs> the other one he must have lost. Um, giant rats I made. Yeah, they were not there. Cultist I made. Um, as a character, actually. Just to try it out, what works best. Um, so, yeah, that's our party then. Gold Mount is another adventure that, that I configured in here. That's not actually needed. Um, don't need that either. I can go... So, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing this, and if it's anything like um, our Conan game, because a lot of the players are the same as in the Conan game, it should be quite a laugh to watch, and it's hopefully quite a laugh to play. Um, I just am slightly dubious, but I'm sure it will be fine, of um, how well the the D&D um, idea will actually match here. Oh, no, no, it's Pluto is online, so I need to quickly get rid of Twinkle, because he's on this map, and he's not supposed to be on this map. Why is he logging on? So, there we go. Naughty boy. Naughty boy. He was looking at my map. Julian. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, and if you want to tune in, first um, game, I think we're going to play that live. Not 100% sure, it's not going to be in the evening of the 27th of June. 
Um, otherwise, it will be on YouTube afterwards. By all means, tune in, check us out, uh, join in, buy us some rerolls, and we'll see how long it will take. Uh, I've been watching a few actual plays of this, and there are definitely people who are taking more than 40 sessions to get through the campaign. So I think we'll be busy for quite some time. Oh, and there you go. He's got a demon. <laughs> uh, good roll. Wait. There you go. Skill roll for nice failed with a demon. Anyway, um, take care, everybody. If you like this sort of stuff, leave us a comment. If you've done something like this, leave us a comment. If you think it's a really, really daft idea to try and take a D&D campaign into Dragon Bane, again, tell me about it. I'll definitely be interested to hear it. And for now, I think we're going to say goodbye. Bye now.